Okay, great. So if there's any background noise, uh, apologies for that. I hope you can hear me clearly. So can anyone just confirm that you can hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So today we'll be going through CML, CML mainly, and just before, because it's not, it's not a huge tutorial, just um, something uh, small but very effective for our JIT flow. So does anyone here know what CML is? Has anyone interacted with CML? Could I get um, volunteers, anyone who has used or who knows CML is, if you've just heard of CML? Anyone? Okay, so for those who don't know, maybe you've seen it before. CML is just continuous machine learning. I don't know if that helps someone who has used it before but used it with the full name. CML is continuous machine learning. So anyone who has interacted with CML, continuous machine learning. Okay, so I'm assuming silence means we are all new to these concepts. Most of us are new. Okay, Ajid says no. That's good, that is communication. Ajid, that is very, that is, uh, that is what we teach here, communication, especially in an online setting. Communication is important. Just as I see you also saying no. Okay, so before I introduce CML, so maybe has anyone maybe heard of ML Ops? ML Ops. ML Ops. I'd turn my video on, but I think I'm in a very dark place. Yep, very dark. That won't work. Okay, so ML Ops, anyone who has heard of ML Ops or who knows ML Ops is? Okay, Josia says you don't really know what it is, but you've heard about it. Yes, Nahom. Nahom, you've heard of MLOps. Just unmute and tell us what is MLOps. What have you heard about MLOps? Nahom? Is Nahom here? Maybe Wangoi. Wangoi, you want to go? What you've heard about MLOps? What you think it is? It's, it's even been included in the document, so I think there are some reference materials for those who have gone through the challenge document. You should really know what, you should have seen it somewhere. Yes, Ajit, Bill? Uh, I would say that uh, it's uh, uh, machine learning uh, practices for deploying and uh, maintaining models. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Anyone else has anything to add before I give my point of view? So we've not heard of CML, but uh, MLOps have had some response from MLOps. Okay, so now home, it's okay. You have issues. Just type what you've heard about MLOps in the chats. I can go ahead and read that for everyone. I, I, I know that mics can be issues sometimes. So just type what you've heard about MLOps and you can share that. EG does mention that there are practices used in uh, the deployment and what did you say? Deployment and um, was it managing of machine learning? Okay. So no one is okay. Okay, so maybe just to point a little bit, EG is uh, close, very close, but um, Okay, so he's seen a home thing. It is a useful approach for creation of uh, quality machine learning and uh, AI solutions. So both of you, I can say you are close, really close, and have a good idea of what MLOps is. But uh, generally, MLOps are the tools that are used for, like Ajit said, them um, for deployment and just to ensure this continuous machine learning process and we have we have a lot of tools in MLOps that just ensure that everything is um the CICD we keep mentioning CICD continuous integration and uh, delivery and MLOps are those tools that come in come in come in handy 
to help with this continuous integration and delivery. So we have a number of tools. We have DVC, we have ML Flow, we have uh, CML. I won't be going through all of them today. Tomorrow we'll go through ML Flow and DVC, but today I want us to focus on CML. So CML specifically, like I'll say, let me just share my screen, I think, from now. I hope, but then I hope that makes it clear for those ones who say they don't know, they've heard a little bit about MLOps, but not, it was not clear. I hope that makes it a little bit clearer. Yes, just yes, thank you for responding. So I just wanted to introduce MLOps and then I'll go into detail about one of the tools used uh, for MLOps and um, CML. CML is what we'll be looking at. So let me just share my screen. Okay, so I hope you can see my screen. So let me just, the presentation will be directly from the ones who developed uh, CML. They're also the ones who developed a number of MLOps, the same ones who have developed uh, DVC, and I'm not sure if M MLflow is uh, theirs as well, but I do think it's, uh, it's actually theirs. And uh, so what where MLOps come in handy and why we actually need MLOps and just CICD. It's because most of the time you find yourself in an organization that has many people and everyone is working on something small. Maybe you have a team of two people working. Let me just narrow it down. A team of two people working with uh, with modeling, another working with pre-processing, others working with EDA. So many things come together in a machine learning project and everyone is um, in charge of doing different things. Same thing you're doing this week. You are in a group and I'm assuming the best way to approach this um, this week's um, project is everyone has been assigned some task to do it. So when you are using like, uh, for example, GitHub, this is just an example of a repository. When you're using, when you're using GitHub to manage your project, to manage your code, there should be that form of like a checking. Whenever anyone pushes their code to GitHub, it undergoes some form of checking to just ensure that whatever they've pushed or whatever they've checked into the repository actually aligns with what the organization wants. So today I will be looking into CML, for example, and this is um, mainly used when, whenever we are doing changes to the repository, checking if that change adheres to something certain and then giving us back a report. So if you see, this is the CML repository. I just wanted to, for you guys to see what CML can do for us. And as, as I've introduced, it is a tool for implementing the CICD, what is now we call and uh, with a focus on uh, MLOps, we also have DevOps, but MLOps is specifically for those machine learning kind, kind of projects. And what CML does is anytime you push your changes to, to the repository, this workflow, let me call it a workflow, this workflow just takes what you've pushed and uh, runs it through something already preset, a workflow already presets, and then gives some kind of feedback. So this feedback CML comes in handy because this feedback could be in the form of a really nice comment or like a really nice report. And you'll see like here, for example, it could give you some form of images, it could give you tables, it could give you so many things. So this is an example of like a report generated by CML. We will be able to generate one of ours today. So I've also done something previous and, uh, you know, for example, most of the time I in week zero, you guys are saying, every time I push my code to GitHub, I get this email that run failed. That is some form of... Um, some form of CICD, but for that week we are not using CML. I think we are using Travis, another form of CICD, but this week we'll be focusing on CML. And I've just run one successfully. Let me check that there's an email somewhere. Okay, yeah, this, this is my email. 
and when you run example cml what i want you to focus on cml is it can give you some kind of specific report something that you've already coded every time a push is done i get this kind of report and it's telling me maybe okay some 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 model training has been done this is the kind of metrics for that model this is the visualization for that model and so many things you can just make this report personal and uh, give you what you want okay so Mm, I'll just come back to this later. I want us to start, and I have created this repository on understanding CML. And let's take uh, to go through it together. If you are following and you have your laptop on, you could just start doing this and see CML in action yourself. Again, if you have a question, you can just stop me and ask, and I will respond. Or Lily is also here; he will also respond. Okay, so we have here an example of a repository. It's very, we're doing some form of some form of machine learning. So I do have some code here that is just training a regressor. And uh, this code, as you can see here, I'm just uh, reading the data. And then this data, I am splitting it into test, train. This is all just part of modeling. Then I'm doing some form of training a random forest regressor i'm doing some training here and then i am getting the score for the train test and i'm also getting the score for my test set so what i want to get with my cml is this train and test score and that's why you'll notice here i have just a few code a small code of land i don't know if you can see that the output i get from train score and test score i am just outputting them to this file called metrics.txt so this could be anything this could be any name but it's advisable that it be a txt file the output that you want to display as your reports with cml so the other thing uh, like i've just shown you from my email the kind of response i got is graphs just a little bit some plots and that's why from my let me see from my code you could actually see here that i am plotting that I am plotting some uh, feature importance. It's just uh, a simple bar graph. So I'm getting the feature importance. I'm getting the feature importance from my data, from my, from my model, from my model. And then I'm just doing some, some bar plots here with X label, Y label, the title. And the most important thing is that I am actually saving the figure as feature importance done. Dot, uh, PNG. Just yes, I can. I've seen your text. I'll just respond in a few. So just yes, I've seen your text. Just yes, I'll just respond in a few. So the most important thing is that I did save the image that I am generating for from the feature importance. And then you noticed I had uh, two two plots. So the other plot, the other plot was a residual plot again taken from my predictions from the model again and i'm just doing a scatter plot and then doing a line plot just to show how they're distributed along that um that line okay so again the same important thing it's to save that specific graph so i want this specific okay sorry so let me just answer just yes before i continue so here you are asking why it's percentage 2.1 this is uh, some form of formatting like it's called decimal yeah it's decimal point so i just want you to notice my results let me just show you before i go on i'm getting my percentage in oh sorry i'm getting my answer as a percentage and i'm getting it with a 0.1 decimal point does that make sense so that is just what that part of the code is doing it's giving me a, it's formatting my answer to a percentage and it's just giving me a 0.1 decimal 0.1 no no it's called one decimal place yeah that's the word oh my god that's primary and um, I am forgetting. Okay, does that make it clear just yes before I continue? Yes. It's so this is just formatting formatting the values that I get. Yes, it's clear. Thank you. Yeah, and, the, and there are a lot of percentages. They are just uh, some form of, should I say, like, uh, are they placement, like a placeholder? 
how we, I think this is done in most programming language since, yes, I have training variants explained. You'll notice here training variants explained that it's 3.0%. So just the percentages, it's for this section here, put this value, which this value is referring now to this test score. So the point one F is a formatting the percent, but the most the percentage, the one at the start and the end, it's just like a place. It's called a placeholder. I think it's a placeholder, yeah. I hope that makes it clear, just yes. Okay. Okay, so this is what I have on my repository. I also have the same project on my local file. I want to show you guys uh, mainly from the local file because we advise communicating your remote and local files. So I have the exact same file from my local end. This is the file I was just showing you from the repository. The exact same thing I have just shown you. Okay, so I want any time anyone pushes a code, relate, uh, a code to my main, my repository, this specific code gets run and I get now, yes, my test score, my training score, I get this feature importance plot. At the same time, I get this residual plot. So I want this to run every time. And this is where now CML comes in. And so CML, how to create CML? It is created as a GitHub action. I think GitHub action was introduced to you. And CML is created as a GitHub action. How GitHub actions are created is with this folder called, let me just navigate through my file. It is with this folder called uh, .github and then workflows. So anytime you're doing any form of a uh, GitHub action, whether it's a Travis, whether it's the CML, and I don't know if there's another GitHub action, maybe, of course, there are others, I don't know. You always create it in this folder called .github, and then inside the .github, you do a uh, workflow. So you'll notice when you look at the um, at the repository, this folder called .github and then stroke workflows. This is just uh, two folders that you just name them like that. So how to add them? You could add it just locally, how you normally do, maybe just a new folder, name it .github. It's not something that you have, just name it .github. So I have one there, so just search for GitHub one. Oh, okay. I don't know if it will, let me see. Let me just try somewhere else because I don't know if someone's doing new. Oh, so that's that's a no. Don't do it on the files. You've just figured out that cannot work. So how I created mine was directly from the repository. I think the ones who use Linux have a way of creating folders. I am not a Linux person, but how I created mine was directly from the repository. And you can just do add file, create a new file, and then you just do the name of the folders there. So this will just be dot GitHub, and then. Anytime you do a stroke, it creates it as a folder. So the GitHub and then the workflows. And then you do again another stroke, meaning that is another folder. And then finally, the name of your CML file. So you'll notice the name of my CML file is CML. Dot Dot YAML. And the thing to note about this name is that you can name it anything. It does not have to be a CML. You can name it. You can name it maybe uh, A-B testing workflow or maybe telecommunication workflow. This name does not matter, but what is most important is that it should be a dot Y A a YAML file. It should be a YAML file. So of course I won't create this again, but because I already have it, but that's how to create this folder and this file. And uh, the the code for this CML file, it's actually provided by um, this repository. The Let me say the owners, creators of CML. They have just a simple workflow of how your CML file should follow. And maybe just to go through this workflow before we just copy paste and don't know what we are doing, is that each workflow is given a name. So here it just says your workflow name. So this could be anything. Again, like I said, it could be an A-B testing workflow or it could be a telecommunication workflow. Or it could just be again CML 
anything. The naming does not really function. The next line it says on push, and this specifies uh, when does this CML workflow specifically run. And this is on push to our main. So anytime every, anyone pushes to our main, when a push function is done, this CML will run. So I think the other options we have, it's like um, maybe on pull request or on, um, we, we only have, we usually have only a push and a pull request. So I don't think there's anything else. So what this, this just specifies anytime there's a push to my repository, this file should run. Okay. So what is, when it's running, you'll notice, uh, I'll just show you an example of what happened in the back end. It needs, it needs like a platform to run on. You know, when you are discussing about Docker and deployments, Anytime maybe something is running outside the organization, it needs some form of operating system. And most of the time, this is specified as Ubuntu. The latest could just mean whatever version of Ubuntu. But this just says, let's run this workflow on an Ubuntu kind of operating system. And the next things are commented out, but you could actually uncomment this container. This is actually a Docker container. Everything that has been done by CML, everything here that has been done by CML, you could get most of these functionalities just by importing their Docker image, their Docker container, and that is what this uh, does. But for now, we don't even have to uncomment that. It will still run with or without that. The next thing is, again, just setting up our environment. What are we going to use? Again, we are just going, as I said, it will be running on uh, Ubuntu, and uh, it will be using, like, for example, Python. So it's just setting up, like, the environment that this workflow will be running on. This is what most of uh, our peer is just stating. So the most important part and the part will be mainly interactively changing, mainly changing. It's down here. What do you want exactly in your code to run? So you'll notice I have named it train model. And when I say train model, you'll notice, let me just open my GitHub action. So first, let me just cancel this. Yes, leave. Okay, so let me just open any, let me open, let me open the, f no, 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 okay. I don't think that's it. No, I'm looking for, Okay, I think we'll just check it in a few. Just give me a second. No, oh, that's not it. There's something I'm looking for. This is not it. This is not it. It's okay. So I'll just show you when we do the run later. What uh, there's something I am looking for and uh, how we do the namings. What exactly is running during that workflow? How we name them? So that's why it's just saying train model. I think I'll just show you later. And so when we say what exactly should run, and what I want is first install these requirements. Okay, thank you, Didier, for sharing that folder. I had not shared that folder. Okay, so what we want it to do is first install our requirements and then train our model. So the zone of where we are installing these requirements, you'll notice what I mentioned at the beginning is that um, each workflow has to set up an environment before training your model. And your model, if your model, like for example, if your model my model is using, at the top here, you see, it's using Seaborn, it's using NumPy, it's using Matplotlib, it's using SKLearn, all these things it's using. Your environment needs to first install these uh, libraries before running your file. That's why we have the pip requirement. No, that's why we have the pip install requirements dot txt. This, again, you guys will notice. That means if your requirements.txt file has not been changed or it's not up to date with your file, 
then there could be an issue with your CML. So you need to have that requirement CXT reflecting everything that is being used in your um, in the in the Python file that you want to run. Okay, so it does a pip install and then it uh, trains your your file. It does a train your file, and you'll notice from our file we had outputs. We had a matrix.txt and we had two files. So all of these files we want them to be outputted as a report, and that's what the final part is doing, writing a CML report. So it has, uh, of course, cut. So here it's results.txt. In our in our case, it was matrix.txt, and then it is sending that as a comment. So I hope you've understood the structure of that CML. We are going to run this in a few uh just uh okay, let me just let me just run let me just go no no no. let me do it let me do it from this end okay so here i have my cml file this has already been changed a little bit i hope you can see it so like i said name it the way you want it's on a push running on ubuntu it's using the docker for this uh cml creators and then we have training our model installing everything i hope you are following through and then here it's where we have now our report design it how do you want it to look we'll make a few changes and see how this affects our our reports and our code okay so now that we have these two what we are trying to test is anytime we do a push to our main, how does this CML file respond? So let me just do a change. Let me do a change on my code. Just a small change. Let me do a change on my code. Or first, let us let us just push. Actually, let us just push the way it is and see if it will re, if it will. So I don't know what should I just change. Let me change the name. Should I, what should I change, guys? Let me add a comment. Let me just add a comment. Hashtag comments added. Okay, so it's just a change. Save. And then, thank God I'm on VS Code. So it's just simple stage. This message is just adding a comment. And then I commit that. Then I push my changes to local. So I think it's pushing. Let's go to. So I am on my branch, and you will notice that there's something running. There's a dot here. There's a check continuing. It's just the push that I have just done. The push that I have just done. It is still running. And you will notice everything I had uh, designed in my CML to set up the job to initialize. These are the containers that I was saying about the, um, the CML. The one has already been, been created. We're just pulling everything done by CML. So it is initializing the containers. And then it has some actions. Okay, so it's yeah, we're actually following what's going through. It's going too fast. I hope you are still following with me. So again, we said we have this actions checkout. It's just uh, creates that environment for this specific workflow. So let me just that is done. That is also done. And you'll notice next what it's doing, it's train model. What I was trying to tell you guys how I named it. So just train model. And uh, what train modeling is do. Okay. So you'll see it's called, ah, sorry, sorry. It's, it's finished while we were still going through it. So train model, you'll notice the first thing it did is people install the requirements. It is it's installing a scalar and pandas matplotlib. Something you'll have to notice is that every time CML is done, it first clears what was there before. So even if this were installed before, it clears that. Or if it can reuse it, for example, if the panda is already used, it can just use it directly from the cache. And that's what is happening here. This is pip install going on. And then after pip install, we had our write CML report. And what our write CML report is just sending this as a comment to my github.pr. OK, so if I go to my pull request, the one that I've just done, I think I called it. Wait, I'm, I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong. Wait, that is.
I did a push, right? I did a push to my to my branch. I did a push to my branch. Yeah, three minutes ago. You'll notice here that this is a comment on this commit. So is that commit? Exactly. So there's a comment on this commit. And so this is what CAML is doing. Um, should I open this side to side? So we have, yes, the metrics. These are being drawn from the train.py file. We also noticed the feature importance plot that we drew and the residuals that we drew. And this is the exact same report that is actually being sent to my email. I think there's another one. Yes, we noticed another one. The exact same report. Okay, now that you've seen CML is actually running, you could just do a change. Let me change, for example, I was doing a random forest regressor the maximum depth of two. So let me just change to like a maximum depth of five. We are trying to make this model maybe perform better. And uh, so my change is, okay, just change the maximum depth. And I've changed it to five. I have saved the changes. And again, I'm in VS Code, so I just stitch the changes. So changing, changing maximum depth. Five, and I commit those changes, and then I push. Okay, so pushing is going to, you know, it's going on. So we could just again. No, no, it's on our branch. I'm doing my changes from a branch. Yeah, again, there's a there's another action going on. So the same thing we've just done, but this time we've changed our maximum depth from two. To, to five. Okay, so the same thing will run. I just wanted us to see the CML report changing, the difference we had before and now. Then you can just open the floor for questions. So I don't know if there's anyone who is following actually doing this through with me. Is anyone else doing the CML as I do this? Maybe we can get feedback from someone maybe with an error somewhere. Maybe mine is just flowing smoothly and someone has an error. Is someone following and has an error? Before this, this check, as you see, it's still running before it ends. Or is there any questions so far? Okay, does silence mean we have all understood and are following or that we are just, okay, we are still at the create repository? Where are we? Maybe, okay, Emmanuel says understood. Okay, so the same, I had shown you how this is uh, happening. So the check has completed. And uh, let me just go to that commit, to that specific commit. Commit. So the change there is reflected. And now I don't know if you can see there's a difference. There's actually even a difference in this plot. Maybe I'll open the two side by side. Uh, let me open. I think let me open from my email. Because the same is being sent from my email. Let me just duplicate this email and open the second one. <laughs> okay, so to my left, you see the first report that I generated with a maximum depth of two. And to my right, when I just did a change to my code with a maximum depth of five, this is the report that I got. You see the changes, the numbers are changing here, like 33% for my training variance, 54% for my training variance here. Same thing for the plot. I think that is very clear. We can see so many features are being included with this, uh, just increasing the depth. And I think the same thing, let's see residuals. Okay, so there's no, okay, yeah, there's actually a difference. So, so many, Many of our predictions actually aligning uh, on this diagonal compared to the previous one. Okay, so this is what CML does. And actually the same thing can be viewed. The same thing can be viewed from the, re from the report. No, 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 from the repository. 
as I had mentioned. And the good thing is that you can actually compare the reports given this time and this time who did the push at this specific time and uh, just the normal JIT flow and of course doing um, a JIT pull to your main branch if this excites you or not. Okay, so with that, I think I'd say we are done with CML and I'd take any questions. I would take any questions from here because I'd actually say that that's it. That's how CML work and how we generate CML reports. Okay, something else I wanted you to note is the functions that CML use. Let me go to the CML file, the CML file. CML, the CML file. Okay, Margaret, just go ahead and ask your question, Margaret. Um, for CML, uh, mm -hmm. so the function exactly that, that CML is supposed to run, is it a specific function, uh, like a class function, or it can be like anything on the code? Okay, so you're asking the, 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 the function that it run. Sorry? You have to run or I didn't get that. The function that? Um, for example, we were running um, just a minute. Sorry, your voice is quite, quite low. Just a little bit. Uh, so we were running, um, we were running matrix text. Yes. Right? Yes. So um, when we're running, is it is it like a class function exactly that uh, a CML, okay, for example, on our code we can have like um, a class for statistics and then we have one for just different variables. So is it, is one CML specific to one uh, function or it can be for the whole for the whole code the whole project um i think you could do it for the whole project at the same time you could do it the ml all eight workflows and uh you what i'm just doing for the current workflow is i am i am running this python dot train dot py so if you want to run more than one python file you could just do a number of this i am only running one train.py python file but any other file you want to run maybe it has whatever functions you have the point is that we are running a file so if your file has multiple functions that you want to run for to get one output just that return function you do that here so if you have more than one file you could just do all of them here you could just do all of them here, Python, TrainPy, maybe Python, Streamlit, no, no, yeah, Streamlit, is a, maybe Python, dashboard.py, Python, app.py, a lot of different, a lot of different functions can be done here. So the model here, metrics.txt, you know, this, we were just doing it, we had our values generated from our model, a train score and a test score, and these values, we were putting in our metrics.txt file. So this metrics.txt file is the one that we are outputting to our report in CML. Does that make sense? The same thing with, uh, I had said, PNG. Uh, if you look at the CML file towards the end here, I did put the metrics.txt to my report. At the same time, I did publish my feature.importance PNG again to the same report and my residuals.png file to the same report. So everything that I want from my Python, from my train.py, I am outputting it to my report.md. You also notice like the model metrics, this is just a markdown model metrics. If you look at that output, just the titles like model metrics, data visualizations. I have changed, I have uh, 
tackle them as markdown so just hashtag hashtag and model metrics and that again put that to my report data visualizations that again put that to my report i hope that that's clear uh, yes you guess okay that's better than no okay just yes just yes you have a question just yes or just yes. yeah just yes yes hello hello yeah uh i think it is a little bit more clear but i would like to ask first if you if we can have uh if we can have many workflow in the same repository yes sure you can have more than one workflow in the same repository you could have this running on a push and maybe you could actually call this i've just written it as understanding what cml you could maybe name this as a training model workflow and this is just dedicated to training that model you could have another workflow that maybe uh i don't know just checks could we say i've been in this organization and every time we did we did a push it was checking your code if it has if every function has a doc string and so that is another you could do that as another workflow just checking the doc string if every single function has this section called a doc string and then you just output the output yeah maybe it's okay or no 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 that fun there's a file that does not have a doc string so you could have the answer is yes you could have more than one workflows you could have more than one cml workflows yeah okay now i would like you to explain the beginning of the yaml file i did not i did not understand well but i think that you you explain just from uh when where we we, we put the file to me but the beginning i did not understand oh, okay so what what the beginning of the file is doing especially from here Yeah. from the ubuntu letters to here it is just setting the environment that your workflow will be running on like you'll notice if you're running if you're running your code locally maybe you're using a windows machine that has these specifications maybe a 64 bit what a ram what so anytime this kind if github wants to do any form of run our workflow run it also needs to simulate some form of environment and that is what this section is doing it is being an ubuntu latest again it is using a docker from uh, cml and then just setting up most of this if your code is maybe using a few things like maybe node js you'll need you can see down here there's another way of setting up the node js instead of maybe just setting up like the ubuntu like we did so we don't need this because our code does not require node js or uh, other specific things that's what this is commented out this is provided by um, by by cml the foundation and uh yeah we don't need that part we only needed the ubuntu latest and maybe just installing a few of our requirements dot txt library that makes it clear oh the other thing that you need to know is this part it's also at the top this just says when should the cml workflow run and this is on a push to our repository on push and what about the name when where you put uh, i think train model somewhere is it the first time that you put them or no no this is just this is just naming that that process i don't know if you can see it now I don't think we can I tried that before but you you notice every time I did I did a push there was this check going through and it was just going through this document so so okay a push has been done okay what next let's create this environment okay what next then after setting up the environment is just like a name what we are doing next is training our model you could name this anything you could say anastasia here and it will just say there anastasia it's just a naming of what's happening what's the name of the workflow going on it's clear now now uh, i would like you to make a summary of the uh, uh, of the different steps before ending of the different uh, of the different steps to implement the cml so i would like 
the different steps from the beginning. Just a summary, a short, a brief summary. Oh, okay. So the first thing to note is that CML is being run as a GitHub action. And what that means is that your CML file should be within these two folders, .github and then within our workflow folder. So anything within .github stroke workflows will be run as a GitHub action. The other thing is the naming. It needs to be a YAML file for it to be run again as a GitHub action. The other thing is, again, just this document. And this document, you just give it a name. When should it run? Say specify the environment it will run on. And then, OK, so what exactly are we running? What we are running is installing the libraries, and then we run this specific file called train.py. So after it runs this, we want an output, and our outputs give it to us in the form of our, of our reports, and that is what is happening next. So anything, like we said, metrics.txt, we are getting this from our train.py. These figures, we are getting all of this from our train.py. So anything we are outputting to our report, we are doing it from train. We are getting them from train.py. And then finally, we just come and send that report as a comment, either to that commit or to that pull request or to, yeah, or to anything that you're doing with GitHub. So you send it as a comment. You, you don't have to do this. This is just advice so that, again, you can get a really nice email. There's some really boring emails like, I, I could show you guys the number of the ones that failed and there was no report. So it's, it does not make a lot more sense, but at UCI, a report makes much more sense than just uh, not having that report. You could do it without the report. This part is not, it's not a must, but the report just makes it really nice. So does that make sense? Just yes. Yes, it makes sense. Now, I would like to know if, uh, where should I put the, the scripts? Is it, I would I'd like to know if I should put the script in this same folder with this or... Okay, so your scripts are just in your general, let me say your general, uh, just how you arrange it normally. Either you're okay. doing, so here you see my train, the file that I'm running, this is it. It's yeah. just in my repository, so it could as well be a document in a in a folder, I'll just have to reference where the file is. And this is now the file that has the code that needs to be run. So anywhere you put it, it's okay as long as you just access it. The main idea is that we are running this. It's the same way when you guys, I think you've been doing tests before and anytime you want to access a test file, anytime you want to, to access a test file, maybe with like your CML, you'll find yourself accessing it like for example, Maybe Python. Maybe it's a may, oh, sorry. Let's say, let's say your file is in a folder. So you'll just say Python, and then maybe the name of your folder is uh, let me say script, script, and then stroke train py. Yeah. So this will just access it exactly where it is. Alright. Yeah. It's clear now. Only everything is clear. Okay. So hey, uh, is that? I saw Fiseha, Fiseha's hand up. I don't know if it's still up before we go to Ejid. Fiseha, maybe did I answer your question? Yeah, you answered my question when you were explaining to the previous guy. I think his name was Josias. Thank you very much. I was oh. just going to ask you whether uh, where we are go where we are going to find the, uh, I think it was in line 39, the metrics file and you basically told okay. us that you know, it was going to be generated by the python file so that was it thank yeah. you very much yeah okay Ejid, over to you so yeah my question is does this happen to any branch like any branch that you when you push you get the report is that right yeah so in my and case in my case, I just, you, if you look at my CML file, it's just sitting on push. So any push to whatever branch will have the CML file 
running any form of push. But I think there's, uh, I don't know if this happens for CML as well, maybe Didier can help that out. There's a way of actually stating maybe on push to main. I don't know if the CML does that, Didier. You could actually say maybe only push to main, when only a push is done to main. Okay. Didier? Uh, also, uh, so this is a. This seems like it's about uh, images. What if, like you, you are also you also want to mention some text, some uh, return values, for instance. Uh, uh, let's say you want to report the accuracy or. Confusion matrix, something like that. That is not a picture in the report. Okay, sure. So that you just do it again with your code. Maybe we could change these codes. I don't know if, uh, let me get that. Let me first. Okay, so let's say, for example, how do we generate um, confusion matrix? So let me just see. Mm, do I know the code of head? Let me see, let me see if I can get it somewhere. The confusion matrix. Confusion matrix. Where have I done that before? Where have I done that? Um, confusion matrix. Where have I done that? Okay, so I think, yeah, I know I have a code like that. Or maybe you can just uh, return the first five lines in the X train. I just suppose that any value once you can report any value, anything can be possible. Okay, sure. So let's just write, let's say DF, DF, you know, DF head, let's call it DF underscore top. So, do I have a train file here? So, let me just check DF.head. Yes, I have a DF here. Have a DF. Okay, sure. So, I just come here and I do it. Right. I just want to put what this means. This is a string. So I don't want to do a string. <laughs> I don't think this will run. Let me just not do that there. So this is a pandas. never done an, a data frame to the CML report, that's why I'm struggling a bit, but let's just try it out, we can just figure it out now. Okay, so let's do the reports, let's do echo, so let's call it, let's sample data. So since this is actually a, a, a pandas data frame, let me see if the CML have a way of displaying a pandas data frame. So that should be, let's see their functions. The functions, so we have a runner, launches a runner, okay, publishes and this publishes an image. This uh, sends a comment to the report. This sends the report as a check. 
commit the files to a new branch, returns a link to a tensor board. Okay, so I still think the best way is to do it with the .txt because with these functions, there's no way to do, besides asking what's the current question, the question is if we can do an output like an, um, a data frame to our report. And so let's just do it cannot do it directly there, so we have to do it on this .txt. The whole data frame? No, 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 we're just doing a sample. We're not doing everything. We're just doing a sample. Let me just check that out. I think pandas have a way of saving it as a CSV file, right? Maybe you can import CSV file, like you imported textus. No, no, I get, I do get what you're saying, but I don't think, wait, so is that good? We already have, we already have the top, we already have it as a pandas data frame. I want to output that pandas data frame to my CML report. And I thought the easiest way would be just to add it to my metrics, to my text file. But to add a pandas data frame to a TXT file, I don't think that's feasible. I've done here, I'll file the right. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and this is a, maybe that's string. what I was. Yeah, maybe that was, that's what I was talking about. You can. Yeah, this is expected. Mm -hmm. I think, I'm sorry, but I think you can uh, export it to a CSV file like the data frame dot top dot to csv and oh, maybe yeah, sure. you can use that csv file to uh, be displayed on the cml report mm -hmm. I, I stop dot to csv will write it it's panda Yes, but this will lead us to give it a name. So, yes, yes, we should get like that. The assumption I made here is since the uh, the CML thing can read text files, I thought it will also read CSV files. That's the assumption. I never tried this before. I'm sorry to understand the CSV file. A CSV file, all I've used before is that the, the TXT files. So we could just try and see the output. Actually, I think I think we don't even need this anymore. So we just check the heads, make it a CSV, okay. And then we try and output that. Now that you ask this question, I'm also curious to know, to see the uh, output. Okay, let's see if, if it can work. I'm crossing the hand, so changes have been done. Okay. I think it's going to work, there's a comment there. Cloud command can work with CSV files, so let's see. Thank you. 
Okay. Oh, sorry, I've done a clone instead of a push. Okay, hands crossed. Let's see what's happening. Moment of truth, eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I don't know. Nothing is going on. Oh, here it is. It's actually writing, writing something. Okay, let's wait. Let's wait for that output or an error. An error is also an option. <laughs> so before I translate, let me just see. Yes, HTML, right? Okay. Maybe you can use YAML file for YAML request. YAML request. Okay, this kind of means. Oh, it actually ran successfully. Let's see that report. Let's see the report. Let's see that report. It was, it was a commit. It was a commit. It was a commit to my. Page. I actually didn't think. I actually didn't think it would work. It would work. Let's hope so. Okay, so the output is not that nice. Maybe we need to make it, we need to do some, okay, let me try, let me make it, I think there was a way of making it slick. I don't know if just adding the markdown will make it look better. I don't know if it will help. Change. I think I should just comment out this as well. This keeps taking time. Still running, still running. So, but clearly, the CSV file can actually be output. So, I think uh, the main idea now is just to format it to look like uh, a table, <laughs> to look like a table, or um, what do we call it? Or like a pandas data frame because we've seen the output is there so it's just formatting so the csv the csv does work just the formatting there that needs to be changed yeah beautify it as a gd saying just beautify that output just make it more appealing 
I don't know what's taking a lot of time here and I've just I'm still setting up the job. Okay. Oop, that did not run. That did not run. So that the this one did not work. That only works for images. I don't know if you noticed guys I had minus minus md so yeah that did not work that only works for images the images formatted as markdown so maybe just we'll figure out how to format the csv file as well because that formatting clearly does not work out so it is uh, removing Yeah, I think that will need some uh, more research, just how to beautify that output, because we have the output, it's just not in a good way. Let me see the kind of emails I got, like a million, so that failed. Nobody's friend. Yeah, so we just need to beautify this part. Actually, didn't, this is, oh, this, so that's weird. Okay, you guys, do you think, do we have this, uh, no, no, I don't know, I don't think so. Yeah, but I think that, that says it, we just need to beautify it. That was a, a response for, who asked that question? Was it, a, no, no, it's not a JID, who asked that question? Yes, a JID, sorry, yeah, we just need to beautify it. Okay. So any other question? Maybe I hope that makes it better. Ajit, does that help? Yeah, that helps. Just a sign that it is possible. Like anything is possible. We just need a little, a little more research for that. Yeah. Oh yeah, actually Thanks. we could also try. We could also try because it is this, uh, let me call it a shortcut. Of instead of outputting everything from our data, you output just something that is here. So let me take this. Do I have a sample? Uh, wine quality. Let me let me get some sample data. No. Well, let me just output. This is a, this is a huge data. What's the size of this data first before I try to use it? <laughs> Okay, it's 90, 98 KB. Let's try to output that directly, see if it will work. Hope it works. Okay, so. So let's do cards. Okay, another fingers crossed to see how this will look. I think this will run, but I don't know how it will look. So let's just see how this one will look. Should be the same though, should actually just be the same. And hope for the others on the call that you are following, I'm not just communicating with Ajit and uh, Kiseha.
Yeah, it doesn't think it will be the same. I've realized I've just output another CSV file, just the same. I think it will be the same. We'll just see the output. I think it will just be the same. So successful run. Removing MD, that's not the one. Yep, that's the one. Yep, still the same. So we need to find a way to beautify the CSV. And I think for those ones who are interested, go and search how to do it with the Markdown because CML uses Markdown specifically as its um, kind of language, the communication language, the same way people use Python and uh, like whatever HTML. So the YAML, CML, it uses Markdown. So find a way you can do with Markdown that CSV to look like in a, because you can do a table. I think you can do a table. So I think the best would be to output it as a table. You noticed here there was, there were the, these outputs in tables. So I do think there's a way of doing it as a table using Markdown. So yeah, do research around that. Fisa, I have something to Sorry. add. Yeah, uh, I just saw something in the chat box. Emmanuel Zaudu sent okay. a very nice, uh, nice fix. I think that will be very helpful, and I think that will answer that the, the previously asked question. He basically saved the data frame into a PNG file, and oh, then he put the PNG file in the CSV report. Okay, let's see. Sweet. Let's just you can see. Right. You can see the exact code. Uh, you can see the exact code on the chat box. Okay, so let's change that. Okay. So we have our file. All this video job. Um, Anastasia, I'm sorry, you, the code has been written? Yes, let me just, I was trying to make it, you need to, okay, let me just. Oh, I've just realized I have access <laughs> to your guys via chats. Yeah, I think that's better, right? <laughs> that's better. Whoa, 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 the formatting. Okay, so instead of columns, you just... You just can make it, uh, yeah, you, you just can make the line surface the data frame dot eight. I don't think we have colon one and colon two as the features in this no. data frame, right? Do we have? No, we have. Uh, we have. Let me just check that data out. We have a lot more. You can just see. Oh, okay, but you can also okay, okay. It's better than it's not. If it was in oh, this this has so many. Let me just take the first two, the first two, what are they called? The first two columns, fixed acidity and volatile acidity. Let me take those two. Yeah, but it's okay, I think just fixed acidity, fixed, fixed, that is an underscore, fixed. Be sure to import the libraries. Which libraries? The PLT, the Radiomat.libraries.
that Emmanuel is going to say it was uh, the matter claim, right? Yeah, but maybe you have them to add uh, English. You just have to add the image to the CML. Yeah, to, yeah, because you imported Matplotlib, but not Matplotlib image. Oh, it's using. Where is it using an image? Uh, I thought PLT is the only library being used here. Which other yeah. library am I using here? I don't think it is using MP image. Yeah, I think it's okay. Right. Everything is PLT. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to that file. Do an image that you now publish. And that. Some checks haven't completed, so let's just wait for it to run. And wait for that email. I'm, actually, I'm, I'm using the email, guys. I hope it's just because it's easier for me. We could take it directly from the commit. The reports also come uh, on the commit. I just find them easier to check from the email, but yeah, we could, let's actually use the commit for this one. Taking time. Okay. I hope it will run. It's taken a longer time than the others. Oh, it did not. What was the error? Could you see the error directly from here? The Lord, the Lord. It's saying the same thing. So that did not run, and for, I don't know, one error, but it's completed it, it got 10 error. Error process. Oh, so it's the name? So Maybe okay. it's not the color name. name. Yeah, it's clearly the naming. Uh. Maybe you can just uh, check columns. Check everything. And, no, no, no. Maybe uh, I'm thinking we just something I'm thinking. That I just that in the chat. Maybe we can give you like the first few columns as a list, and you put them in the, in the comments. I feel like that would be easier if we are doing it on a Jupyter notebook because now I'd have to do again. Okay, like, oh, I can do it from here. Yeah. Let me do it from VS Code.
sure that's you. I don't even have the files installed my, from my end. I don't have to. So, guys, I'm on a machine that doesn't have anything to install. You don't even have condas and a conda installed here. So, that's tricky. Let's just do this instead. This is um, an error with my machine. I am on a very old machine. I think we just do the head directly because I'm thinking here, yeah, so remove this. And comment this out. And just do the head directly so that we find the column. I don't think in blue we need this low part. Like it when it takes time. Every time the second time it has failed. So okay, okay, that's good. Okay, okay. Okay, next. Oh, and the face. Oh my god. Yeah, so the data frame does not have the same fig, Amanel. That is pandas. I think that's pandas. You're sure pandas has the same fig? So I don't think pandas. That's the error we are getting now. Hope you guys can see that the pandas does not have the same fig. So, yeah. I think we just do more search. We've already taken 30 minutes extra, so maybe just find a way we can do beautify that CSV and have it out. As I was thinking, yeah, using it, outputting it as a nice table using Markdown, and I think Markdown also takes HTML and CSV, so we could just do it out as a table. But the same fig has not worked. Yeah, that is actually just an error with what we were using, so we just get another approach. Okay, apart from that, I hope Ijid, Fiseha, Emmanuel, we can wrap up on that. We've already taken 30 minutes extra.
and just find another way. The same thing did not work there. Then, okay, so any other question maybe apart from what we've been going through? There was any other question on CML? Okay, so will everyone be okay if we end it there? Could we say that, yeah, we could actually implement CML this time in our code? Maybe just a response from a few people from the chat, or maybe just hands raised, then we can just end the class there. So that's a return from plot. We are we're actually focused on finishing this class. So can I just end, maybe end the class there, stop the recording, and then we can solve this error for those who want to remain on so that we don't take so much time. We could just continue with that approach. But the one that has been suggested by Nat Nile, but maybe is it okay if we end the class there? Any other question on CML? We end the recording there. Anyone who wants to drop, they can drop. And then we try to fix this error with that approach by national, is that okay with um, everyone? Okay, so let me just stop the recording first. Yes, that's it for that class. For those who want to stay on, we'll just continue from here. Okay, so just the recording.